right. Well, welcome to our third Idaway Technologies video conversation. All right. So I am Ken Khan. Director of Partnerships and Collaboration. And as always, I'm here with my colleague. I'm Roxanne Glazer, Director of Marketing and Learning with I2I Technologies. All right, so this week we're talking about webinar series. So that's the story that we've been talking about this week. And so the question um, that came up was, what is one aspect in planning a webinar that is often not considered. And I got accused of stealing answers last time. So this time I'm going to let Roxanne answer first. And I've prepared multiple answers. So that way I will not say just copy her like I've done in the past. Yeah, okay. Awesome. And now I'm going to take that to see if I can roll like three answers into one and see what you see if you can I think you can think on your feet. All right. So one aspect uh, in planning a webinar that's often not considered, one. Okay, I'm going to say with one. And this comes from, because, you know, a lot. I've worked with lots of groups, lots of people on effective presentations through video communication. So in the webinar aspect, because generally it is, um, oftentimes it's a, a slide centric or you've got your slide deck that you're sharing. I would say often overlooked would be the visual design of the content, the chunking of the content, and the pacing. And so I would put all of those under um, presentation format. So that's what I think is most overlooked because I've worked um, specifically, we would look at the slide deck, you know, and so they'd say, well, this is what we normally do you know, in a two hour workshop. And as they reformat it and want to present it in a 45 minute webinar, a lot of times the tendency is just to take those, <laughs> there was a slide deck, it was like 80 slides and just, you know, go through it as quickly as possible, which, and in, in, in that was also reading of the slides. And so with that, a lot of, um, what we know about how to present information and how we retain information and understand it, those principles are often ignored. So I am going for content design. Basically, it really is content design. So chunking the uh, how it looks visually and the pacing of it. That, that's, I, I like how it's like, I almost want to go to the judges and be like, is that one? judges is that one because like i'm hearing her say one but then i'm hearing her say more than one but did you see me wrap it all into information design i use that as the umbrella to reach out and with the tentacles grab all of my other answers in one so what do you think i, I feel like you're stealing from my strategy last time where i was like quality and then i listed all kinds of different things under my definition of quality you know, whatever you model, I'm trying to just kind of keep pace with that. Well, I'm glad, you know, I should have figured you would go in this direction, you know, with your presentation skills and your artistic skills. Um, thankfully, my brain did not go that way with this question. So there's no worry about me stealing anything this time. And luckily, like my preferred answer is still available because I had two and I, but I have one that I really prefer that I was like, oh yeah, this one totally resonates with me, but I can go here if, if Roxanne picks it. So my one aspect in planning a webinar that's often not considered is. Are you going to let me guess? <laughs> oh, I already know you guessed because you were trying to do what I, you thought I would say so you could throw me off. But no, mine is preparation of the presenters. I think that is often overlooked is people are like, oh, they've been on video. We've done video calls. They'll be good. Everything will be fine. And they overlook that in a webinar, it's a little bit different. Um, and so you want to prepare those presenters. A, a rule of thumb that we like to use is we like to say, hey, let's have everybody connect 30 minutes before the session. Um, and that 30 minutes, it works great, especially with people that, you know, they, they're comfortable with video already, right? They know how to connect to the meeting. Um, you know, they know how to be on camera. They know how to 
mute and unmute the microphone, but you have that 30 minutes before. So you just make sure, you know, maybe they're in a space they're not usually in. And even though they're comfortable, they don't realize their, you know, their connection's not very good or something happened to their microphone or their video isn't showing proper properly. So you have that 30 minutes and some people might think that sounds like a long time. Some people might think that, that doesn't sound like a long time. But again, like in our practice, we've done a bunch of different groups. 30 minutes seems to be perfect because what worst case scenario, everybody connects. Okay. Everybody looks good. Okay. Well, okay. Let's just want to go do this before the session. I'm going to go do that before the session. I'm going to go grab some more water. Um, so 30 minutes and, you know, checking the video framing. Um, that's, that's an, often one that people don't pay attention to in, in, in the presentation, microphone checks, um, sharing content is a big one in that 30 minutes. Cause it's like, okay, you know, they know they've shared content before in a meeting, but maybe they're a little more nervous because this is a little more higher stakes. Right. So like, um, like recently we had somebody that was just, they wanted that presenter view on their PowerPoint slideshow. And when they were sharing it, they, it was not sharing properly, but, because we had plenty of time, we were able to help walk them through, figure it out, and get everybody back to a calm state before the session started. Um, so, yeah, that's that's mine, the, the preparation of the presenters. Yeah, and I'm going to tag on to that uh, 30 minutes because um, I was on the call as we were working with uh, presenters and getting them in that uh, preparation. I'm going to add on to yours and expand mine. How's that? The other thing during that 30 minutes is with presenter preparation, one of the things that I think is underestimated is that support for the presenter, you know, to plan for that as well. Um, because we want whoever is, is presenting the content, if they're the subject matter expert, we want them to be able to focus on that. And sometimes if you're on a large webinar, and it gets highly interactive in the chat or the questions that are coming into the Q&A. If there are a lot of those, it really is difficult for you to uh, maintain your, we talk about on-camera presence, uh, to maintain that, to maintain your train of thought, and to also read what's popping in into the chat or into the Q&A box. Because despite you know popular culture of saying, oh, we can all multitask, we know now that the brain does not. You're really just going to be switching between from one task to the other. And so one of the things that um, you know, we really, as we work with groups, we're like, who's going to be the moderator? You know, sometimes it's one of us. Other times it'll be someone on staff with them to help the presenter. Because that is, I think that's another uh, key. So I guess you could take my original answer was in the pre webinar because when you think through the design of it the design of your content that's one thing and then uh shifting to what to do look at you look how that worked 30 minutes before what do we do then and then also thinking through what do we do during the webinar because the other part and i know uh we do have some um we've had conversations we do have a little difference of opinion here if there is you know, whether the rep webinar is live or a recorded webinar, that can be very different in, you know, how are you going to support that? Because I know I've been on some that they are kind of fake live webinars. I don't know if you've ever been on one of those where they basically play a recording and then the person, so everybody's watching the recording and then the person is in the chat answering questions and stuff. But again, I don't, that's not my preferred either presentation or learning style, because if you're focused on the chat and you're reading and answering questions at the same time, this fire host of information is coming at you. What's what's the point, really? I know I kind of got off the off of it that there's a lot. I think there's a lot more around webinars than people really, you know, initially they're like, I've got a slide deck. I'm just going to read my slides. I think there's uh, you can be more thoughtful and intentionally design a really uh, a really effective virtual presentation with some thought. But yeah, yeah, I think it depends on the, the type of webinar, right? If it's strictly informational, 
like where you're just spewing out a bunch of information. You're not looking for any interaction. The audience isn't necessarily either. They're just like, I just need to get this information. You know, I get that. You know, those are pretty straightforward, but a lot of the webinars that I attend um, or help people with, there's usually, they want some kind of interaction, right? And, and, and I would say the majority of them do have some type of Q&A. It's pretty rare that there isn't an opportunity to do that. So even within that, it's like, well, how do you want to do that? Do you want Q&A all during, you know, as you're talking, things come in, you just stop whatever you're talking about and address questions. Do you want to set specific times? Um, do you want to do the whole presentation? You know, maybe it's a 20 minute presentation and then you want to take Q&A and conversation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, things to consider. You know, I was going to say on your content thing, too, that's always one of my favorite comments when people are presenting and they're like, I know you can't really see this. And I just want to be like, OK, if you know that if you knew it, why did you do it anyways? Like, why are we looking at it if you know we can't really see it? Yes, I agree. And that's when we work with, uh, when I've worked with instructors or presenters, one of the things that, you know, and we touched on this, uh, gosh, was it our first or second chat where we talk about kind of the equity? Another aspect of it is respect for your audience. So if you are putting something up there and you know, you know they can't read it because you literally say, I know you can't read this, then reformat it so that you can communicate it in a different way. And then also what I coach people to do is to provide that information in some type of downloadable document, because if it's something that's important, then how do you get it to your audience? You know, the 30 minutes is great, but if you, if it's your first time doing some type of virtual uh, or webinar. Does people still exist? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I mean, maybe. You know. Maybe in like 20 years when they're like, oh, yeah, I wasn't born when the pandemic happened or I was five. Okay. I'll, the five-year-olds are like, oh, yeah, I went to school uh, during that time. Okay. I will school. amend that because it's different to be a on the receive end maybe it's your first time to present content those are the ones that we still find where you're like oh i've i've attended a lot of zoom meetings you know i've watched a lot but sometimes the first time that you do something and you see the back end tools when you're like oh oh this is this is kind of a lot to manage when, if it's your first time run through it you know a lot of the platforms will allow you to record it so you can kind of record, you can see what your content looks like. Sometimes we'll connect in, you know, I'm like, hey, Ken, can you connect with me and see what this looks like? Because if you, the first time that you present in, in whatever platform you're using, the way it handles the content in your video windows, it can be very different. So you might think that your content, it looks great when it takes up the entire screen on your laptop in presentation mode, but then when it goes into platforms, depending on which platform you're using, you know, they could have a very small video window that, you know, the people around are going to take some of your real estate. And so what you thought looks great on your laptop, it might have just a little tiny window that's, you know, a third of what your screen is. So, and when you test, you want to test in that platform that you'll be using for the webinar. How do you, what's your preference for how you might coach someone for that? Or is it, you know, and I know it's going to be different for each person, but are there some things that you have found or you, you're like, oh, I think that's a little more effective. Um, any tips or any things for that? Anything? Um, I mean, my preference is to let the presenters present and let somebody else manage the questions and the comments for them. Um, you know, sometimes the, you know, we have had presenters that are very, very comfortable on video and multitasking. They're used to doing things on their own. So they like to do that on their own. But, you know, even for myself, like I prefer somebody else to help do that. I mean, I do not like to present by myself um, just because I feel like, you know, having a co-presenter, if something goes wrong with one person, you got that backup person there. Um you know, I like to be, you know, when I'm presenting, I want to be focused on that and not looking at questions coming in or anything. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that's one of the things I like to tell people is like, you know, maybe let somebody else 
kind of feeds you those questions so you don't have to like scroll through them and look through them and you're kind of thinking about the answers um as you're looking through them um so yeah that's 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 where i would go i would add on to that one thing that um i always suggest is that they uh stop their slideshow so that they um go full screen especially you know if they don't need the uh slides to answer the question to where if they're just you know able to very fluently just answer as those come in uh because that's one of the things sometimes um in a webinar with cameras turned off you know you don't see the person you'll see the little um sometimes the picture and you know we have heard with from different groups we've worked with that uh when people actually see the person and as they're answering that that can add um a little more of the uh presence into the into the webinars i know it's not always possible but uh, we've had good feedback as people have uh have used that with we've used that with different groups so anything else for like the webinars no um you yeah. Um, next time we're going to be talking about, you know, going from an informal video meeting to more of a professional video meeting. So we'll probably hit on some more of these type of, of things next time um, with maybe a specific context around it. But I think that kind of wraps us up for this uh, third conversation. Mm -hmm.